In this video, we will learn how to get the derivatives of two functions using the product rule and the chain rule. So the formula that we are using is is the formula that we have to use in the product rule. So f of x multiplied by g prime of x plus f prime of x multiplied by g of x. So let's assume that this function is f of x and this one is the g of x. So first we get the f of x. So 5x minus 2 quantity raised to 4 then multiplied to the derivative of g of x so d over dx times x squared plus 5x plus 6 and plus f prime of x so derivatives of of the first function f of x 5x minus 2 raised to 4 quantity raised to 4 and the last is the multiplied to g of x x squared plus 5x plus 6 the next step is to get the derivatives of the this function and this function so copy the non derivatives 5x minus 2 quantity raised to 4 multiply the derivatives of x squared plus 5x plus 6 so it will be 2x plus 5 then plus the derivatives of 5x minus 2 quantity raised to 4 using the chain rule it will be 4 multiplied by 5x minus 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 5 and copy the last term next is to factor out the common terms this and this one so 5x minus 2 raised to 3 multiplied by that because we take the, the 3 and we, only one will remain 5x minus 2 raised to 1 multiplied by 2x plus 5 plus we took this function so we cancel it plus 4 multiplied by 5 times x squared plus 5x plus 6 to, to continue copy the outer term 5x minus 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 5x minus 2 multiplied by 2x plus 5 or to simplify it will be ten x squared plus twenty one x minus ten plus twenty multiplied by x squared plus five x plus six then distribute twenty to 2x squared plus 5x plus 6. So we get 5x minus 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 10x squared plus 21x minus 10 plus 20x squared plus 100x plus 120.
So, simplify or add the uh, similar terms. 5x minus 2 raised to 3 multiplied by 30x squared. We add the uh, 10x squared and the uh, 20x squared. So we got 30x squared. Next is the 21x plus 100x, so 121x. And the last is 120 and negative 10. 120 minus 10 is equal to 110. And this is the answer for this term. The next problem is solving the derivatives of a rational equation using the quotient rule and the chain rule. So the formula that we have to use in this problem is g of x multiplied by f prime of x minus g prime of x multiplied by f of x over g of x quantity squared. So let's assume that the numerator is the f of x and the denominator is the g of x. So we, we get the g of x 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 5 times f prime of x. The derivatives of x squared plus 2x minus 12 minus the derivatives of g of, g of x so d over dx of 2x squared minus 5 raised to 5 multiplied by the f of x x squared plus 2x minus 12 over g of x quantity squared so 2x squared minus 5 raised to 5 raised to 2 so we simplify it and so it will be 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 5 times the derivatives of x squared plus 2x minus 12, it will be 2x plus 2 minus the derivatives of 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 5 using the chain rule, it will be 5 multiplied by 2x squared minus 5 raised to 4 multiplied by the derivatives of of this binomial quadratic equation it will be 4x multiplied by the last term x squared plus 2x minus 12 over simplify this it will be 2x squared minus 5 raised to 10 So the next thing to do is factor out the similar terms. It will be 2x squared minus 5 raised to 4. It is the GCF of 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 5 and 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 4. So multiply it to the 2x squared minus 5 multiplied by 2x plus 2 and minus 5 multiplied by 4x is 20x multiplied by x squared plus 2x minus 12 over 2x squared minus 5 raised to 10.
So, next is to simplify the terms inside the bracket. And to simplify this term, cancel this, and it will be 6. So, it remains 2x squared minus 5. times 2x minus plus 2 minus 20x times x squared plus 2x minus 12 is 20x cubed plus 40x squared minus 240x over 2x squared minus 5 quantity raised to 6. So, 2x squared minus 5 times 2x plus 2 is, is 4x cubed plus 4x squared minus 10x minus 10 and my, minus Simplify this and multiply it to negative, negative 20x cubed and minus 40x squared plus 240x over 2x squared minus 5 raised to 6. And the last is 2. Add the similar terms, 4x cubed minus 20x cubed, it will be negative 16x cubed and 4x squared minus 40x is negative 36x squared plus 230x minus 10 divided by 2x squared minus 5 raised to 6 and that is the answer to derivatives of x squared plus 2x minus 12 over 2x squared minus 5 raised to 5 using the Quotient tool and the chain rule. The third problem is about position, velocity, and acceleration. So, a ball is thrown downward from a height of 8,000 feet building with an initial velocity of 80 feet per second. First, we have to get the position function, P of T. So, the formula, T. To get the position function is because the ball is thrown downward we use the negative negative one half gravity t squared plus initial velocity t plus initial position so initial gravity in feet is 32 negative 1 half times 32 t squared and our initial velocity is 80 feet per second so because it is downward so we'll, we'll use negative 80 t and the initial position is 8000 feet plus 8000 so, it will be negative 32 multiplied by negative 1 half is equals to negative 16 t squared minus 80 t plus 8000. The question A is, what is the velocity at 12 seconds? So, to get the velocity function, 
we need to get the derivatives of p of t. So v of t is equal to p prime of t is equals to negative 32t minus 80. So v of t is equal to negative 32t minus 80. So we get the 12 seconds v of 12 is equals to negative 32 multiplied by 12 minus 80. So the answer is 304 feet per second. Now we got the position function and the velocity function. And the next question is, question B, what will be the velocity of the ball when it hits the ground? So now we get the position function because it's it's asking for the position of when it hits the ground and p of t is equal to zero because when the ball hits the ground its position will become zero and it equals to, equals to negative 16 t squared minus 80 t plus 8,000 so factor out 0 is equal to negative 16 t squared minus plus 5 t minus 500 so it was equated to 0 so it's equal to 16 factor this quadratic equation so the factors are t plus 25 and t minus 20 so t is equal to negative 25 and t is equal to 20 so the answer is 20 seconds because negative time is irrelevant in the problem so we get the velocity what will be the velocity of the ball v of t or v of 20 is equals to negative 32 multiplied by 20 minus 80 and the answer will be 560 feet per second that's the answer for letter B Now for the third question, question C, how long does it take before the ball is moving at a speed of 560 feet per second? So the answer for letter B is V of 20 is equal to 560 feet per second. So how long does it take? So the time when it's moving at the speed of 560 feet per second is equals to 20. So the solution for this is, is the V of T will be equated to negative 560 
because the ball is moving downward so the velocity is negative 560 and equals to negative 32 t plus 80 so negative 560 is equals to negative 32 t plus 80 so transfer it to the other side and negative 32 t will be transferred to the other side too so 32 t 32 t is equals to 560 plus 80 so 32 t is equals to 640 over 32 t is equals to 20 seconds for the last question of this problem the question b what will be the velocity of the ball when it travels a distance of 160 1664 feet so let's imagine a drawing this is the building and this is 8000 feet so imagine this is the 1,664 feet this distance is 1,664 feet and let's talk and for the last question of this problem the question B what will be the velocity of the ball when it travel the distance of 1,664 feet and the first step we have to do is to get the position function p of t is equals to negative 16 t squared minus 80 t plus 8000 and we equate it to 8000 minus 1664 because the position he's in in zero second is eight thousand, so he traveled in about one thousand six hundred sixty four. So we subtract that to his original position, and that's the position he's in when in this one thousand six hundred sixty four feet. And the next is it is equals to negative sixteen t squared minus eighty t plus. 8,000 equals to 600, 6,336 feet and transfer it to the other side equals to negative 16 t squared minus 80 t plus 8,000 minus 6,336 equals to zero so and simplify negative 16 t squared minus 80 t 8000 minus 6336 is equals to plus 1664 equals to zero factor out the 16 negative 16 so t squared plus 5t minus 104 equals to 0. And get the factors of this quadratic equation equals to negative 16 t plus 13 multiplied by t minus 8 equals to zero so t will be equal to negative 13 
and the other is t is equals to 8. So the time that we are getting is 8 seconds because negative 13 is irrelevant because of the time. So get the velocity of the ball at a distance of 1664 feet. So V of A is equals to negative 32 multiplied by 8 plus 80. It is equals to negative 176 feet per second. So the velocity of the ball at the distance of or when it travels, the distance of 1,664 feet is 176 feet per second. For this fourth problem, given f of x equals to 2x raised to 4 plus 8x raised to 3 minus 100x squared minus 600x plus 900. We're going to get the maxima and the minima. First is... We have to determine the interval where the function is increasing or decreasing. To, to get the interval, we need to get first the derivatives of the function. f of x is equal to 8x cubed plus 24x squared minus 200x minus 600 and factor out the similar terms or the 8 so we can get x cubed plus ax squared minus 25x minus 75 and next is to get the factors of this cube so the factors are 8 multiplied by x plus 5 multiplied by x minus 5 multiplied by x plus 3 so we can get the value of x by equating it into 0 so x is equals to negative 5 and x is equals to 5 and last is x is equals to negative 3. So, draw an array. So, so, this is the negative 3, negative 5, and 5. So, to get to know if the interval is increasing or decreasing, we have to substitute x into negative 3, negative 5, and 5. So, f prime of negative 3 or below 3 or below 5 5 and 3. So, the value below 5 or lower than 5 is negative 6. It is equal to negative 264. So the values lower than negative 5 is R negative. And next is the values between negative 5 and negative 3. So let's try negative 4. It is equal to 72. So the values between negative 5 and negative 3 is positive. And the values between negative 3 and 5 is F of 4. For example, it is equals to negative 504. So the values between negative 3 and 5 are negative. And lastly, for the values higher than 5 is f of 6 is equals to 792. So the values higher than 5 are positive. So, it is from negative infinity to negative 5, it is decreasing. And from negative 5 to negative 3, it is increasing. 
and also from negative 3 to 5 is decreasing and to 5 into infinity is increasing so we can get the increasing increasing points are negative 5 and negative 3 and also 5 and infinity and for the decreasing will be negative infinity and negative 5 and negative 3 and 5 and next is to and finding maximum and minimum point so to get the maximum and minimum point we need to get the second derivatives of the first function f of x so f double prime of x is equals to 24 x squared plus 48 x minus 200 so our critical numbers are x equals to negative 5, x equals to 5, and x is equals to negative 3. So to, to get the maximum and minimum point, or to determine if it's maximum or minimum, we substitute or get f double prime of negative 5. So substitute if the x to negative 5. The answer for f of f double prime of negative 5 equals to 24 negative 5 squared plus 48 times negative 5 minus 200. And the answer for this is 160. So, if the value of, of the function is greater than 0, the function, the function is minimum. The minimum point of this function is negative 5 for the x and for the y is 160. So, next is the f of prime f prime of double prime of 5 equals to 24 5 squared plus 48 times 5 minus 200 so it is equals to 640 so it is positive it it's also equals to minimum for the minimum point it is 5 and 640 and last is to f of for a double prime of negative 3 24 multiplied by negative 3 squared plus 48 times negative 3 minus 200 so the answer is negative 128 so it is negative so it is on maximum point So, the maximum point is negative 3 for the x and for the y is 128. For the last problem is optimization. So, the problem is an open box with a square base is to be constructed from 30 inches by 30 inches square cardboard by cutting out squares from each corner and bending up the sides find the dimensions of the box that will have the largest volume what is the volume of the box so start with the formula for the volume so this is squared square or so it is side times side times x 
So, the sides is side is equals to 30 minus 2x. So, the formula for the volume is equals to V of x equals to 30 minus 2x times 30 minus 2x times x. So, 30 minus 2x quantity squared is equals to 4x squared minus 120x plus 900 times x. So, simplify or distribute the x. It will be 4x cubed minus 120x squared plus 900. Then, so to get the dx, the value of x, we need to get the derivatives of v of x. So v prime of x is equals to 12x squared minus 240x plus 900. It is equals to this factor out the 12. It will be x squared minus 20x plus 75. Now, we'll get the factor of this term. So, 12 multiplied by x minus 15 and x minus 5. So, x is equals to 15 and x is equals to 5. If we use x is equals to 15 for the formula 30 minus 2x, it will turn into 0. So we get the x value of 5. So let's solve for the side s is equals to 30 minus 2x it equals to 30 minus 2 times 5 equals to equals to 30 minus 10 and the side is equals to 20 inches so for the volume the sides are 20 inches so side times side times x 20 times 20 times the value of x is equals to 5 so 20 times 20 times 5 equals to 20 times 20 is equal to 400 times 5. The volume will be 2,000 cubic inches. So 2,000 cubic inches is the largest possible volume, volume of the square inch box that can be made.